7 o'clock. Good evening. The Charter Township of Plymouth Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. We'll come to order. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Stewart. Here. Trustee Monahan. Clerk Borba here. Trustee Dorshevitz. Trustee Kermy. Here. Treasurer Clinton. Here. Supervisor Heike. Here. All present, we have a quorum. Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Lieutenant Kudra, why don't you lead us? You're all wonderfully dressed tonight. Let's grab hold of the flag. Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Lieutenant Kudra, why don't you lead us? Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Lieutenant Kudra, why don't you lead us? Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Lieutenant Kudra, why don't you lead us? Thank you, sir. You need a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Clerk. I move for the approval of tonight's agenda. Motion is made by Clerk Borba. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Monahan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Item D is approval of the consent agenda. Kevin Bennett has an update on that. Yes, on the uh, resolution for the amendment to the water and sewer ordinance, the resolution refers to the first reading in two parts. I have uh, emailed a replacement resolution that just changes the words first to second. So substantively, it will be identical, except it will be correctly referencing that this will be the second reading rather than the first. Okay. Uh, any other questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I need a motion, and this will require a roll call. Mr. Supervisor. Uh, yes. I move for the approval of the consent agenda for March 23rd, 2021. Motion's made by Clerk Board. Is there a second? Clerk, second. Second by uh, Treasurer Clinton. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Supervisor Heike. Yes. Treasurer Clinton. Yes. Trustee Kermy. Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yes. Clerk Borba. Yes. Trustee Monahan. Yes. Trustee Stewart. Yes. Motion carries. Item E is public comment limited to three minutes. Anybody in the public wishes to speak? Excellent. Do you have uh, a, a, are we doing online or not? Tonight? Nope, not tonight. Item F, new business, update on downtown development authority. So uh, you may recall, board, that uh, when we did our goal setting for the year. We talked about the possibility of disbanding the DDA, uh, recognizing that there may have been some financial and legal implications involved with that, and, and our instincts were right. Uh, Mark and I did have a conference with two attorneys from uh, Miller Canfield, one of them being uh, our former supervisor, um, uh, Steve Mann. And Steve and his team, uh, and we talked for quite a while about the pros and cons of disbanding the DDA uh, and dissolving it. And really the, the, the cons way uh, outweighed the, the pros on, on this. Um, it would have been a, uh, a difficult lift both legally and more importantly for, for us to have to reimburse some of the taxing authorities that we do uh, pull taxes from. For example, uh, the library, uh, the Huron-Clinton Metro Parks, uh, Wayne County, uh, and other jurisdictions would have to be reimbursed, not for the whole life of our DDA, uh, but at least for a few years going back, and that would have been a, too big of a hardship for us. So the, the, D, the one, I'm going to go through some, um, Bob, if you can just back that up, that's, you're one ahead of me. So, that, that's where we are. So there are there are certain advantages to still maintaining the DDA, but we do have to reinvigorate the the authority itself. Um, I've had a difficult time getting a quorum in the last couple of years uh, because we've had a very low membership, and and some of the members just um, were, were not showing up, and and that's fine. And some of them have left as a result, but. Uh, what we'd like to do is uh, keep the DDA in place, and I'd like to just go through some of these changes one by one, bringing the authority's membership to at or near full strength. Well, that's what we're doing tonight, hopefully. Uh, this will bring us to uh, 12 members, and I do expect that we'll get, I have a feeling we're going to get another resignation, um, and so we actually have another person lined up if, uh, if we do get another, another resignation. And that person would actually be a resident of the DDA uh, because that's something that the state law 
I don't know, I wouldn't say it mandates it, but it certainly favors at least one member of the DDA who is a resident. Uh, so let's keep that in mind for the future. What we're going to do on the second bullet point is we're going to amend and update the DDA map for maintenance and assessing purposes. We have a meeting on Thursday with myself, uh, Jeremy, the assessor's office, and we're bringing in um, uh, the uh, Paul Updike from Serene Surroundings who does the maintenance for the DDA. Because what we found is that we're, we may be operating off of a couple different maps or a couple different understandings of what the boundaries of the DDA are. So it's generally the area, it's along Ann Arbor Road on the township side from Sheldon Road, uh, basically from where Kroger's is, all the way east to Eccles. And so we are, um, we want to make sure that, number one, that we're assessing these parcels properly for the DDA so, because we're capturing a portion of their taxes and putting it into the DDA fund. Uh, plus, we also are using different, uh, maybe a different map for maintenance purposes. So there were some parcels that we believe were not, that may have been assessed for the DDA, but were not receiving the services, the landscaping and snow removal services that the businesses in the DDA should be receiving. For example, where town, the old township hall used to be, we have the, um, the self-storage facility and the bank, the Fifth Third Bank. Well, they were not getting the maintenance for years because when the DDA was created, the, township, the old township hall was in the DDA, so it was not considered, it wasn't paying taxes, so they weren't getting the service. So we want to make sure that our map is, um, is definitely up to, up to speed. There is a possibility that under state law we could expand the DDA. For example, we could extend it further south on Haggerty and maybe pick up the, Am the new Amazon facility. Um, we do have the right to do that, but then we have to determine as a board whether or not that's financially in, in our best interest because the DDA is sitting on a surplus right now of about $1.3 million dollars is in the DDA uh, surplus right now. So we're going to be ad addressing that. Um, a, one major area for the DDA to get involved is with the CSX overpass project. Now, we've already spent about $15,000 working with CSX to study the concept of beautification in and around the railroad overpass. So that's mostly landscaping. Uh, they do not want to touch the bridge right now and they, they have that right. I mean, all of the rail operations in this country are, are regulated by the federal government, so they have the right to tell us no. But they are interested in working with us on the, on the landscaping portion and uh, also installing a sidewalk, uh, a, a much more safe access underneath the, underneath the bridge. That is something where the DDA could spend upwards of possibly half a million dollars, theoretically. But we don't want to spend all that, obviously. And now that we are looking at a new housing residential development at where the old Elks Lodge was, we would like to encourage them to pay for the sidewalk and the landscaping on the north side of Ann Arbor Road. And I'll talk more about that. I want to talk about a few projects later, so um, I'll make a note about Elks, too. Uh, one thing we can also do that the lawyers recommended is that we could reduce the tax increment collected by the DDA. So we have the ability to do that as a board. I don't know what the, the factor is right now. I, I, don't, I don't know what the percentage is right now. But we could theoretically lower that legally, which would result in the township generating more revenue from the DDA. So that would be less money for the DDA more money for the township. And the other taxing authorities. Yes, yeah, so they would benefit as well. Uh, so that's something we should probably study. That would help to bring down the surplus, the DDA surplus over time. Um, right now, Kurt, the, the DDA captures about $300,000 a year from the various taxing authorities. That goes directly into the DDA bank account. It's about $120,000 of that every year. It's from the township. Okay. 
Um, another thing we, can, we need to start looking at are uh, traffic studies, signage, and improvements at Haggerty and Ann Arbor Road. With the creation of the Henry Ford Hospital, with Amazon moving in, and with other new exciting developments coming in on uh, the north side of Ann Arbor Road, the traffic situation there is going to be pretty intense, and we recognize that. And we've already talked to the county about this. We're highly recommending that they rebuild uh, Haggerty Road, especially from Joy to Ann Arbor Road, where it's already wavy due to uh, repeat, repeated traffic. Uh, but one of the other things we need to do along that intersection, um, and Chief Phillips might be able to speak to this more intelligently, but we are looking to do some safety improvements there that would allow our emergency vehicles to get through that, uh, that intersection. You want to just elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, the technology has been available for many years to make it so that when police cars and fire trucks are entering intersections, those intersections are smart and able to detect that and stop the traffic in other directions. That makes it safer for our personnel and our emergency vehicles to go through that intersection. And with Township Hall and Fire Station 1, our police station right here, there's going to be a lot of police cars and a lot of fire trucks and ambulances driving through that intersection. And we need to be able to do everything we can to decrease our liability and to stop any potential traffic accidents involving our vehicles. Would that also apply? To, does HVA have that capability as well? It's possible depending on the type of technology you invest in. Uh, some technologies just look for the flashing lights, and they have microphones that listen for the sirens. Um, others involve placing an actual device in each vehicle. If we were to go that method, they would have to purchase that device and put it in their vehicle. The reason I ask is because the hospital will have an emergency room, and I know the city is all HVA, so they may be sending their people there as well. There, I think there was a problem a few years ago, though, with hackers selling those devices on the Internet, wasn't there? There may have been, and I'm, I'm hoping that they've tightened those down a little bit better. But some of the, the more economical solutions are just microphones and sensors that detect lights and sirens. Is a system like that, is it a lawful expenditure for the DDA to make it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we can certainly pay. The DDA could pay for tra a traffic study. Uh, we might even pay for the signage. I would prefer that the county do it uh, or the state because Ann Arbor Road is the old M14. Uh, but these are things that would be a legitimate expense uh, for the DDA. Uh, well, is Henry Ford contributing anything to the intersection? In the past, when you have a major development, oftentimes the developer uh, pays for traffic signals like what Northridge Church did on North Territorial Road. Well, our, our relationship with the hospital is governed by the PUD, so we would have to, you know, you, you have to take a look at the, at the so plan. So probably was nothing in the planned unit development. There, there are things that they're going to be doing that are part of the PUD. So, so what are the con are the pros for dissolving the DDA? Why, why did the, you the biggest pro for dissolving the DDA would have been we theoretically could have taken over the one point three million dollar surplus, and we could have spent that money and really any way we want. That we've been looking, we've been trying to be really creative and trying to build sidewalks and try to address the sidewalk gap issue. Um, we've even talked, you know, as you know, we've talked even about bonding for it. Now we have this federal money, the $2.67 million that we're going to get from the feds in the next couple months. We're hoping that we can use that money for the sidewalk gap project, which will be somewhere around a half a million dollars. So uh, the final thing that we're, we can use the DDA for is the improved signage and beautification of the Ann Arbor Road 275 intersection. So the MDOT folks are coming through starting this year. There's going to be a four-year project to rebuild 275 and rebuild a lot of the bridges. So, Jeremy, I don't think they're going to rebuild the bridge here at Ann Arbor Road, right? No, that's no. correct. There's just a handful of, uh, like, deck rehab and some right. uh, things on Schoolcraft Road. Now, of the cloverleaf, as I call it, at Ann Arbor Road and, and 275, the southwest corner of that cloverleaf is going to be the batch plant, the cement plant, f for 
for IT for the 275 project. Okay. So it'll be there for four years potentially. Potentially. Uh, are they going to use it for the whole four years or just uh, two years? Yeah, it might not be there for the whole four years. It'll because it, initially they have the um, they got to demo it. They got to set up a MOT and the whole nine. So there'll be a good six seven months before they get anything up and running. But they're going to start at six mile right and move south. Is yeah. that the plan? Because yeah, this that, this two seventy five project's going all the way to Monroe County. Right. So they're not going to be this batch plant would be useless after a while. Right. They'll just build another one further down. But with that batch plant means that 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 corner of the clover leaf is going to be completely chewed up. And what MDOT has told us is they're going to go through after the project, once the project's done, and they want to get rid of any of the scrub trees that are there, the invasive plants that have grown up over many years. Um, we'll see whether or not they want to plant fresh new trees all over the place, but if they don't, that's another project for the DDA. That's a legitimate project where we could pay for tree installation or match money that MDOT may have available. Uh, and then we may also want to look at the, the signage around that, that area as well. Question. Yeah. How many people are on the <coughs> that want to be part of it? Right now, well, uh, 12 minus 5, so you know, 7. 7. Okay, and then yeah. tonight we'll be almost. We'll be at 12. Okay. Yeah. And now, yeah, go ahead. Let me ask another question. Yeah. So if we, we did away with the DDA, who makes the, the decisions then on how the money would be spent? Well, that's a great question because in order to, if we were to dissolve the DDA, um, we as a board would have to make a policy decision that would hopefully outlast all of us to tell the, the folks in the DDA that we're going to continue doing the landscaping and we'd still have to pay for the landscaping, the snow removal, the, the, the fixing all of the fences and bullyards that get run over every year, um, we'd, we, the township, would be responsible for that. Okay. So that, that's, a big, that's a big liability that we would have to absorb. And uh, so that was one of the big cons. And we, we kind of knew that going in. I mean, <coughs> we, we, were, we wanted to investigate this issue more, and that's why it was one of our goals for this year. And it's just not something that's really uh, in our best interest. Uh, one other item that we should look at is the clock tower. Yeah. We should ma maintain that and keep it painted and keep it working because that's part of the DDA. Um, it is. It was funded by Massey originally. It was funded by Don Massey, and it was also funded by the, the cellular tower companies because there's plenty of um, cellular tower uh, apparatus in that in that tower. Do we own it? The DDA owns it? No, no, the DDA does not own it. It's actually, I, I believe it is owned now currently by Verizon or one of the cellular providers. Because when Cadillac wanted to expand and do their, their re massive renovation, they came to us basically saying, we don't want to deal with this tower. It's not ours. It's owned by, like I said, it just, it may, I think it's Verizon. It's not AT&T, but it's, I think it's owned by one of the cell companies now. So they're not putting any money into it. And the, the suburban Cadillac does not want to be involved in any way with with the tower. That was a Don Massey deal, and Massey did that back in the day when, when co-location of cellular apparatus was, was very new. I remember driving out here from Dearborn Heights to look at it because the cell companies were all over every local government in Wayne County. They wanted to put cell towers up everywhere. We didn't want, nobody wanted cell towers, so we, everybody was looking at co-location, and that that tower was one of the, the best examples of co-location in Michigan at the time. So, but now the, the Cadillac dealership has no affiliation with Massey and they're part of a much larger conglomerate and they're not interested in the tower. So it's, it's not an orphan tower at this point, but it's something where... Well, you know, it'll be a valuable tower when 5G comes. Yeah. It's right next to 275, yeah. so it'll be in use for a long time. Yeah. But it is faded. I know uh, trust, former trustee Dempsey, that was one of his uh, longstanding uh, complaints that the lights would go out and the, the clock face was broken. Uh, it is faded. I mean, it does need some TLC. So, um, All right, so it's on the list. Yeah, I mean, it's potential, but that's something that we're going to have to, the DDA would have to work with the, the rightful owners and find out what they're, I mean, I wouldn't want to do it totally for free. They'd have to chip in something. 
A um, couple other things I want to mention that are not on this list, because we do have some really exciting developments around the area. Um, we have the Elks Lodge, which has been sold, and the plan is that the developers, Chuck, they were the developers who were here at Pomeroy. They were here in 2015 or 2014. It was going to be a, a series of uh, care for elderly. Right. So now what they're looking to build um, is a 310-unit uh, residential development. You would have apartments along the railroad tracks and then town, about 100 townhouses that will be on the eastern part of the, the site. And then what That's we're... That's a lot. Yeah, it's very dense. It would be very dense. We've approved it already? No, not yet. Still has <laughs> to go through all the proper channels. But uh, uh, it, would, it would qualify. It would qualify as a brownfield project because it's on that old steel fabricating site that you've told us about, too, in the past. What we want out of that project is a couple things. One is we want them to help pay for the CSX overpass sidewalk and landscaping. But more importantly, for me at least, we've got uh, general dri old General Drive, um, East Side, Michael, and... Furwood, those are the neighbor, those streets to the north, they are still unpaved, still dirt roads. And they've been asking for years to have that paved. Well, they don't have the money to do it. A lot of the folks who live up there are renters, so they, 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 it's not in their long-term best interest. But this developer wants to connect the development through those streets to get the residents onto Ann Arbor Trail so they can go to downtown Plymouth. Okay, so what we've said is, fine, you want to make downtown Plymouth an amenity. You don't want your residents traveling over all of these dirt roads, okay? Plus, police and fire don't want those to be dirt roads because they need it for access to this development. So we're hopeful, we're very hopeful that they will agree to pave uh, those streets as part of their community benefit uh, to the to the township. Well, this will be three times the charm because there's been two other people that walked away from it. Yeah. But uh, they're very interested primarily because of the hospital and Amazon and all of the other exciting stuff that's going on around here. So um, they're, they're very interested in, in bringing people to this, uh, to this intersection. Um, the other thing that's happening is the old Denny's restaurant that uh, has been sitting vacant now for quite a while. That's going to be, uh, we, they are looking to tear it down. They've, they're coming in to get their demolition permits, and that is supposed to be a car wash, okay? Um, I don't know what brand, but it's, they got, they're all over Canton right now. Um, they're doing very well. Um, finally, I do want to break, we'll have a news, breaking news here. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be meeting with, um, the developers here, right here at, El, uh, um, what's his name, um, Harvey Weiss, uh, and developers from uh, Myers, Myers uh, Supermarkets, the Myers uh, food chain. They are not putting a full bone Myers here, but they are. They they were out here today doing soil borings. They would like to put in one of the Myers new concepts. It's the Myers Market or or uh, Marketplace. Uh, there's one already in um, in Oakland County and on Woodward Avenue. So this would be a about the same size, the same footprint as LA Fitness, but it would be it's basically like Cantaro's or um, uh, West Fresh Bourne, times. West Bourne Market. Fresh yeah. times. Eh, I don't know about that, but yeah, I mean I've never been in one, but I've seen some you know pic pictures. But this would be a a, a, a huge a huge get and. Uh, they want to be here for, frankly, for the hospital, and uh, they want to be here for Amazon and, and for us. And they, they know that there's going to be a lot of activity at this, at this intersection, and so they're going to be meeting with us tomorrow, and we're certainly hopeful that that project will be going forward. Are they going to own it, or is it going to be the condo that was the original plan there? You know, L.A. Fitness yeah. owns theirs, but we had to make an exception right. to get them out of the condo or relationship. Well, I believe since Harvey Weiss is bringing them in, uh, we, we have to take a look at the PU. We have a PUD for that area as well. So Harvey's bringing them in. Harvey made the deal with them. 
So I don't know exactly what the he owns the, the detail the the development right now. Yeah, he owns the the whole footprint. Yeah. So really exciting right. stuff. Right. So we'll keep you posted on that. So anyway, that's just some of the things that are going on within the DDA, and we feel that at this point it's just best to keep it where it is, make it a better, stronger DDA, get some new blood, get some new people on board, and uh, and start giving them some some really attainable goals and objectives. So that was it. There's no uh, no motions or anything needed for that. Any questions? Any questions from anybody in the public? Okay. So we're going to move on to item two. This is appointments uh, and one reappointment to the Downtown Development Authority and, and Brownfield Authority. So with us, we don't have everybody here tonight. Paul Fessler is, could not be with us. Uh, Paul used to serve on the, on the DDA when he worked for DTE, uh, but he retired. And so under law, I had to take him off the DDA because he was no longer representing a business in the district. So he is now on um, as a member of the public. So Mo, Mo Bazzi is here as the owner of uh, the J. Lube oil change facility. On Will Ann they Arbor stand Road. up or raise their hand? Or? There he is. Uh, Mark Corvu, we're no stranger to Plymouth Township, uh, Vice President of Corporate and Government Affairs for Henry Ford Health. So Mark will be re obviously representing the hospital, which is excellent. And we, we would think he'll bring a lot of, uh, a, big, a big voice to the, to the table. Randy Dowd is the owner of the Shell Service Station on Ann Arbor Road at 275. Uh, and John Lackney is a retired logistics and corporate executive, former U.S. Marine, and uh, dabbles in politics occasionally as well. But uh, he's got a – yeah, we don't uh, – yeah, we don't talk about that part. But he's got a terrific resume and a lot of uh, – brings a lot of uh, knowledge to the table. So um, I would entertain a motion to – I would recommend that you uh, approve my recommendations for these five individuals to serve on the DDA and Brownfield Authority. May we have some discussion? Sure. A question. Uh, Mark Korovu, who's representing the hospital, um, what do we do when we start battling over what's taxable, what's not taxable? Because we know on December 30th, the assessor is going to walk over there and determine how much construction value for the next tax for the taxable year and then you're going to get a tax bill so you are the hospital is going to be an adversary to us so how will we objectively deal with that or is that not an issue I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out because I see what's coming well the I, hospital is going to want to be nonprofit and we're going to want to carve out some of it and say well that's for profit and we want to charge taxes uh, and it'll start with the tax bill yeah. that'll come in July of 2022, but based on the construction value on December 31st of 2021. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure Mark can answer, but I would probably suggest that he'd hand that over to their tax attorneys or, or co corporation counsel. But let me let me just before you say that we we theoretically have these conflicts with all of the business owners on on, on the street. We've had I mean, frankly we've had signage issues uh, at, at your service station. We had to work with Mo Bazzi on, on the facade for your facility, you know, and, and those have ups and downs, right? Um, we've had issues with other members of the, of the DDA, uh, the bank. Uh, the, we have a representative from the bank, and we had some issues there. We have the florist, uh, Victor West, where we've had sign issues with him so at his mall. So, you know, we, we, we sometimes are... Um, I know adversarial is the right word, but but sometimes we, we our, our interests may overlap, but that is an inherent that's inherent to the to the organization of a DDA as authorized by state law. the the uh, The objective is it's it's tax. We want to we don't want to have taxation without representation. These businesses are being taxed differently in, because they're in the DDA, and so as a result, state law gives them a seat at the table to help determine. Where um, where the money's going to be spent, right? But my point is, if Henry Ford Hospital is successful, they won't be paying any tax. Uh, well, I so can't uh, say that for sure. But Mark, you want to comment? Pardon? I can't hear you. Can you come to the podium? You want to come up? You're gonna have to come up here because we're on TV. So. so it's tough to answer questions that haven't 
occurred yet, but I, I see your point in terms of um, looking out in Bethany for the township. So I will tell you both personally and professionally, and, and I would think if you looked around at the Henry Ford Health System, you know, we've been on the boulevard for 106 years, that we've not only been a good corporate partner in our neighborhoods and our communities, we've done a, a fantastic job. So I, I don't expect that to change. Okay, any other questions, comments? Hearing none, Kevin I'll... Kevin yeah, go ahead. Is Kevin Strelz the even number of members in the Scott District? No, state law allows up to 12, and that's that's understood. So, and with the way we, we do everything by a simple majority vote. Are there two members from the Lincoln dealership? There were. Uh, there is now just one. All right. So, any other questions? I'll entertain a motion, John. Um, no, I just wanted to uh, make a comment to all five. Uh, and but, but I, I have to admit that I'm uh, grateful for Trustee Kermit's uh, question, uh, sounding like a uh, lawyer. Uh, my, my, my point to all five. Is that a compliment? Is, uh, yes, that's a compliment. Uh, no, <laughs> you, that's do, a you do possess a law degree, <laughs> Trustee <laughs> Dor Dorshevitt. Um, there's two words that are absent here in this discussion tonight. Welcome and community. I want you to say, and Mo Bozzi, you know that I know Dearborn, and you were from Dearborn. Uh, we want to welcome new businesses. We want them to feel very welcome. Secondly, this is community. Plymouth Township people are very Strong, very strongly feel a sense of community. Now, regarding Henry Ford Hospital, I was born and raised in the second oldest city in Wayne County, and they opened their hospital there in 1926. I'm talking about Wyandotte, which is now owned by Henry Ford. They are an incredibly honorable corporate citizen of that community. Dearborn had Oakwood, which is now owned by Beaumont. wasn't open until 1953. So I want to welcome all businesses, but I also want to hope that you will contribute to our sense of community here. And um, we will recover from this pandemic and really get back into a sense of uh, corporate citizenship of community. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Oh. Supervisor. What? Secondly, I would move to appoint Mo Bozzi and Scott Storch to the Scott Qualified Community Guidelines to the Downtown Development Authority slash Brownsville Redevelopment Authority for terms indicated in Resolution 2020-03-23-21. Motion's made by Clerk Borba. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Monahan. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Clerk Borba, yes. Trustee Kermit. Yes. Trustee Clinton. Yes. Trustee Monahan. Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yes. Trustee Stewart. Yes. Supervisor Heidi. Yes. Motion carried. Excellent. Thank you very much. Periodic review by the Board. So, gentlemen, your first BDA meeting is going to be Monday, April 12th at 4 o'clock here in this room. And you'll be contacted by Sue Brams from my office. Uh, and we will also uh, swear you in that night. Clerk Borba or, or someone from the clerk's office will swear you in that night. Uh, so bring your camera if you want. And then uh, we'll also just update you on other things that are going on. You've got a pretty good summation right now tonight as to what's going on. So kind of, it was kind of my secret plan. But uh, you'll, get, you'll get more information from me the closer we get to uh, April 12th. Okay? You guys bring the beer. Yeah. So you don't have to stay for the rest of our meeting, but uh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Stay healthy. All right, Adam F3 is award for bid for a new standby generator for fire station number three, Chief Phillips. Yes, good evening, everybody. I hope everyone is well today. 
A um, little bit of backstory. Fire Station 3 has our oldest generator. Uh, we looked at, we, uh, we contacted our current service provider, Total Energy Solutions, and asked them uh, in the middle of 2020 whether we should consider replacing this unit because this unit is so old. It's, it's almost 30 years old, 30 years old this year. They advised us that because of the low hours and because of how well it had been performing that we shouldn't budget for it in the 2021 year. Between preparing the budget for the 2021 year and now, uh, squirrels, those little red squirrels, got into the generator, ate a bunch of wires. Um, we've been having an issue, especially at Fire Station 3, since the, I think it was the automotive companies did it first. They started using corn-based uh, materials to coat their wires, and this has caused squirrels to um, start chewing Green. on them. And uh, I'm sure you've got neighbors and friends who've all experienced damage from these uh, little rodents. Uh, we've hired, we hired a company to come out and exterminate the squirrels. Unfortunately, they did a great job of uh, exterminating the big fluffy-tailed ones that don't do the damage, uh, thus creating a problem where we had more of the little red devils running around. So this generator uh, was severely damaged by squirrels. We, we called Total Energy Solutions out and asked them to fix it. The cost for them to come out and start looking at it was about $5,000, which they said, if we put any electronics into this and they don't work, You've bought them, and we won't take them back. And we just said, and so we hired another company and another company, and this went on for from the time the damage happened until um, basically now, trying to find a way to, to repair this generator quickly and efficiently. We were not able to come up with one. So we sent out requests for proposals. Now, there is an error in your document. It says we did it on October 28th. Um, we didn't do it on October 8th. That's when I prepared this document, and these are these are fake dates. The actual date that it was submitted for bid was January 15th. We received those bids here in this boardroom on February 19th at 10 a.m., and we received five bids for service. Um, and as you'll see, uh, Total Energy Solutions didn't even show up to do a bid for us. But we did get five, five bidders. Uh, these bidders also bid on the recent fire station built in Canton Township. PM Technologies was the lowest by far. They offered the best warranty. They offered the lowest lead time. In my opinion, they offered the most complete bid package. And we also, um, before this bid went out, we also asked them to review our RFP and make sure to that we weren't asking for things that were manufacturer specific because we wanted we wanted to go out and find the best generator we could find for this project. And uh, and actually PM Technologies came out and helped us prepare our thing and pull out anything that was specific to say Kohler or Cummings or any of the other generator companies so that we could get a broad spectrum and get the best the best generator we can for our station. Um, on page 65 of the board packet, you'll see a list of the prices, the lead times, the warranties offered, the generators, and the automatic transfer skill. Um, if your vision's as good as mine, you can't read it. Um, but these are these are the the bid prices. PM Technologies is the lowest, and it is what we are recommending. And I am happy to answer any questions you may have on this project. Okay, any questions? I have a question. Um, you, know the, you, you know the generator types, right? So the next highest and the next lowest bid would have been electrics, okay? Yes. And it has a Kohler 80K generator. Okay, which kind of generator did, do we have now that has this problem? Are we going to get another generator that has the same corn, you know, mesh or whatever it was used? <laughs> So in the, the proposal we put out, we specifically asked for um, a mesh that surrounds it to protect it from critters getting inside of it. Okay. So I, I believe that you're going to have this problem with a lot of manufactured vehicles, generators, stuff, anything that uses this. And the problem is now that this generator doesn't have corn-based um, coating on its wires. 
but now it looks tasty to them because they've ate it in the four trucks sitting out in the parking lot. So they're going to taste it. Um, but this generator was before that technology even came around. So I don't even know why they went after it, but they did. I'm sorry, I thought you said that that was part of the issue that the that they thought that's why the squirrels went after it. I mean, I had a Well, what I'm saying is, is they eat that because it looks like what's tasty. And when our firefighters are parking their brand new vehicles outside, and our, those have this new stuff on them, and uh, they start eating that, and then they say, oh, what else looks like that? Oh, got it. Okay. Thank you. It's a green thing versus PVC, which is the old. It ate the, the old generator had PVC, which isn't tasty. But it looks the same. They're trained by the new Ford F-150 in the parking lot. Looks the same, so let's chew on it. But so, but PVC is a big pollutant. Yeah. But I urge you to, uh, you need to work on the extermination to keep them away because they'll cause other problems. I agree with you. Again, though, our issue was is we don't want to kill their competition in the area, and that's what we did the first time the exterminators went by. Yeah, you, you killed the fox squirrels. And, yeah. Is there anything you can you spray? You did what now? Okay. What happened the first time? Say that again. So we hired, we hired exterminators to go out because obviously the, 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 the employees' cars were being eaten, the generators being eaten, and the exterminator was successful in killing fox squirrels, not the little red squirrels that are causing the damage. Okay. Thus taking one <laughs> squirrel out of the equation, and now I, the fox squirrel, or the, I think you're the just small squirrel can multiply more. Is there anything they can spray on this equipment that would keep them away, or uh, any? Uh, you know, we, ha we have an, we have a, a company that goes out there on a monthly basis and sprays, and we we've told them about the problem, and hopefully their their solutions are going to work in the future. They're going to have to live trap. In the live end. trapping might be their because best poison option. will kill all of the good squirrels too. Absolutely. So they're going to have to live trap them. Can we spray something that would smell like a coyote or something like that. Can we get? Yeah. Coyote, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, no, I mean, seriously. <laughs> you guys are lawyers and exterminators. <laughs> Dang. I, I have a question about the uh, incremental warranty for 2000 bucks. Do yep. you think you need it? And is it, does it cover the generator and the engine and the switch? The generator what? itself comes with a two-year standard warranty. This is an, uh, an add-on, and for the price that PM Technologies is offering the seven-year warranty, I think it's just in our best interest to go with that. That's a, that's a very low cost for a warranty that is now going to be cover that generator for seven years. We're typically paying about $500 a generator on the normal maintenance every year. But this won't cover that. It won't cover normal maintenance, but it will cover any damage in those first seven years. Um, and again, for that low of a cost on a $36,000 generator, I think it's worth it. Okay. That is a huge engine. That's a six-liter engine. It is, yes. Now, um, Trustee Kermy, you did off <coughs> ask a question the other day about do we need an 80-kilowatt generator. One of the other things I didn't tell you the other day, but when I, I talked to Battalion Chief Fox about this, is he said, yes, we actually discussed it. And one of the problems with going down is we would the panel, the electrical panel that all of this goes through, that connects to the automatic transfer switch, you would have to rewire all of that. And any cost savings we would incur from going to a smaller generator, we'd lose in um, all the additional labor costs to rewire uh, the, the, the panel um, to other things. So... The question was asked uh, when we had this company out, and they said, you'll just lose the money, and you're not going to gain that much, and you'll lose it in uh, labor costs rewiring everything. So are you saying that a smaller generator <coughs> would not power sections of the box or the building, and so you'd have to deactivate those? Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to put those into additional other, you'd other have to change circuit, the circuit panels. You'd yeah. have to change them to a different right. circuit panel. I understand. Okay, this is a bulletproof machine. It's not going to get a lot of hours, so it should last another 30 years. I really hope so. I mean, 
because we have uh, Station 2's generator is the next oldest, and it's about 20 years old now. And all we've done for repairs on that unit is we replaced the exhaust system two years ago. As long as it's squirrel proof. Okay, any other questions? Need a motion? I'll go. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Exactly. made by excellent sir I have one more question about the budget in the recommendation you said we would like to pull from established building replacement fund is that what's in the uh, motion is not the building sinking fund or whatever help me out where are you going, where are you really going to take the money where from? are you reading that okay on the this thing which is the new capital item budget request the last sentence says that they want to take it from it sounds like that fund where we put money in for repairs yes we used some we used some of that money uh, last year for um, furnaces at fire station three and I'm going to work with ginger to pull the right amount and leave the right amount up for the next emergency so some is going to be from capital outlay and some from the help me out uh, jerry what is the name of that fund that you've been touting for years capital improvement i believe capital improvement so it's going to come from both yes but we want to leave we want to leave some funds in there in case we have an emergency okay uh this this is the motion cumulative not to exceed thirty eight thousand dollars that's fine. You can do that. I mean, this was the motion that was drafted by Ginger, so I, I don't, you know, if she's okay with it, I'm, then I'm okay with it. She's very, she's uh, very meticulous about these things. But, John, if you want to put something in there about not to exceed, or what, what did you recommend? Not, you may put that. Said purchase sh shall not exceed $38,000. That's fine. So you're amending your own motion, and we can make a note of that. So do I have a second? Second by Trustee Monahan. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Everybody, make sure your mics are functional as can be because I know we're getting dirty looks from uh, behind the scenes there, which means they can't hear us. But we're working on it. We're trying to replace it. So, uh, item F4. This is the Township Park Pathway Improvements Project bid approval. Jeremy. Yep. This is a uh, resolution for the contractor bid award for uh, to the lowest responsive bidder, Spartan Paving. Uh, this is for the Township Pathway Resurfacing and Rehabilitation Project. Uh, we received seven bids, um, ranging anywhere from 110 to 197 thousand, and Spartan bid was the lowest responsive amongst them. What date are you starting? Uh, we haven't gotten that far, but I would imagine sometime in early May. Just remember that we're going to be doing a park cleanup day on April 24th, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, the intent was to start after that. Okay, any other questions, comments? Ready for a motion? One quick comment. Um, I was contacted by a very large scout troop, and thanks to Jeremy Schrott for emailing already with Wade Myers, a 24-year uh, resident of Plymouth Township, and that scout troop, they would like to join in. And I was also glad that you forwarded in an email of thanks from a township resident. Uh, I mean, that's as healthy as can be, that walking path. 
What is the, and I, what, is that two miles or how, what's the? Uh, the as far as the HMA path? Yeah, how, yes, how, how long is that path? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I, I can get you that answer though. Okay. We have several paths. Some of them are concrete, some of them are asphalt. So okay. it's, you know, we, we had some confusion there some by some folks who didn't know exactly what we were doing paving wise. So mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not redoing all the paths though in the park. Yeah, it's just the HMA, not the concrete. We're tying into the concrete. A lot of the concrete was in better shape. What does the acronym HMA mean? It's uh, asphalt, hot mix asphalt. Okay, hot mix asphalt. Hot mix asphalt. Yep. All right, you ready for a motion? Yes, sir. I move to approve resolution 2021-03-23-23 to approve the award of the Plymouth Township Park HMA pathway improvements to Spartan paving in the amount of $101,825.42. Okay, motion's made by Trustee Kermy. Is there a second? Second. A second by Trustee Stewart. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Clerk Borba, yes. Trustee Dorshevitz? Yes. Trustee Kermy? Yes. Trustee uh, Supervisor Heise? Yes. Treasurer Clinton? Yes. Um, trust, uh, Trustee Stewart? Yes. Trustee Monahan? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Next up is item F5, Household Hazardous Waste 2021 contract approval. So since our last meeting, we've been very busy working with uh, ERG of Livonia Environmental for the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Program for this calendar year. This is a one-year renewable contract. Residents will drop off at the Livonia facility over a two-week period in May the weeks of May 9th and May 16th. Uh, we may extend an additional week depending on how many vehicles drop off. And this, this all goes back to the really good discussion that we had a couple weeks ago when we were debating whether we should be looking at numbers or, or time frame. So I, I took the intent of the board to look for time frame as the way of, of determining what, what our uh, numbers were and, and therefore what our costs were. There will be a $5 copay collected from uh, the, the vehicle or the resident at the time of drop off. That can be done by cash or uh, credit card. Uh, and that will reduce our overall cost per vehicle to $46. And ERG has agreed to our terms, which are reflected in the attached contract. Sarah Weissel is here again tonight. She worked very hard with me on getting this put together in, in record time. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, getting the word out to the public. We are already working on a, 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 a flyer, a card, that will be mailed out to all of our residents. Um, and we will certainly promote this heavily on Facebook and the website and any other means at our disposal. How, how do they know that it is a resident? Okay. Sarah, you want to answer that? So the question is, how do they know if it's a township resident versus a city resident? They're going to have a list. Oh. So I spoke to him today, um, and they they actually have a like a clipboard that they're going to be working off of. They do it with other communities that they service, such as Northville, City of Northville, and Northville Township. So. Nice. Excellent. So so he said his crew is pretty used to having to double check the list and make sure. So we already have cheat sheets that list all of the city streets that would not be included. Um, that we do for our own household hazardous waste event as well. So, so zip code will not be the determinator. No. Okay. No. Good. If I okay. gave you the address, it would be mm. yep. I mean, there you yeah. go. I've got a pretty good cheat sheet already set up. Yeah. So I think they'll be set. There's only a handful of houses that have three digits, and they're all on Sheldon Road. I Sheldon, think there may yeah. be some on Main. We Street. have some four digits also. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a four digit, but we have some, there may be some three digits on Main Street. I don't know, Jerry. No, it's just Sheldon. Just Sheldon. Yeah. So um, there's other ways of doing that too. I mean, theoretically, we could give them the our entire um, tax list and yeah. they, they could theoretically put that on a on an iPad or something and, and just check it off well, as that's people what, come in. Because we talked about that earlier and I did mention that to him and he said it, it's actually going to be easier for them to just have a list. So. Okay instead of using a database or anything. And they're used to doing this again with other communities. Um, the way, another way we're really going to pitch this to the, to the public is you can do this on your terms, on your time. 
That's one of the things Mark pointed out at the last meeting was, you know, we're, you don't have to stand in line all, all morning on a Saturday when, you know, you have to go some, be somewhere else. So you can do this on your schedule. There's two weeks to do it. We're going to publish all of their times. In fact, I think on, don't quote me on this, but I think Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think they're open until like 7.30, 7 o'clock. So there's a, there's a big window every, every day during this period. And if, if the numbers don't look good, then we may extend it for another week. But, you know, I, I have a feeling we're going to be, it's going to be go over pretty well in just okay. two weeks. So. And there's a limit of how much, how many pounds? 100 pounds. And if it's over 100 pounds, you're going to put what the cost is going to yeah. be in the mailer? Yeah. So well, there's no surprises? Know. We'll we'll put that in the mailer, yeah. We can put that in the mailer. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, we're working they, they can either take the rest of the items back with them, you know what I mean, or they can pay to have it. So the piggybacking with your neighbors yeah. is not going to be as advantageous as it has been in the past. Correct. No. Because you've got to watch the 100 pounds. Correct. Now, our overall cost per vehicle is still going up over last year. So, you know, we're going to, we may, I don't think we have to do any budget adjustments yet or if we have to increase the trash collection rate, but it may be something we have to do at the end of the year, depending on. We, we might have to at the end of the year. The way these, these self-sustaining funds work is that at the end of the year, the fund has gone negative. Then we have to write a, you know, we have to write it up for the auditors and we have to basically describe what our get well plan is. So, you know, we're, this is a learning process. We don't know what, what, what this program is going to bring because we don't have any history. Personally, I think it's great. I think, it's a, I think there's many, many pros and not very many cons at all, but we'll learn from the first time to see exactly how it works and we can adjust accordingly. We've got a one-year contract, so we're not committed to it. Uh, Sarah, just, I just had a quick question. Though. That list, when a car comes through, will they check you off the list so you only can go through once? No. Okay. Um, but you will be allowed to go. Yeah, I guess time. that's my concern is they show up on day one with a. You uh, can do uh, that no, now, too. One, though. One, oh, yeah, uh, they can do that now as well. I mean, I could go in I my see car. Cars come through. My wife could time. come in her car later in the day yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. I'm just trying to prevent a situation where they show up on Monday with one car battery and the next day with an empty paint can and it costs yeah. us. Yeah. I'm not sure how you do that. Maybe maybe we don't enforce it, but you put you put in the in the flyer that you are limited to one car. You can only make one trip and we'll be monitoring you. Something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, we, we should discourage gaming the system uh, because somebody will try it. And the next question is commercial and industrial accounts who don't pay trash collection to Plymouth Township, how are you screening them out? Well, it is residential only, and I believe it actually states in their contract they don't take any. Um, it's in the contract. Yeah, but industrial they, or commercial waste. Yeah, so if somebody pulls up in a U-Haul full of uh, drywall, the, they're not going to, you know, they're not, drywall's a bad example. But well, I'm, I'm thinking of, like, the... Uh, so say the Shell station wants to come with 100 gallons of oil, that yeah. kind of a thing. So he can't well, do he that. Well, he has to show a driver's license that he lives in Plymouth Township. Okay. But it's got to be high. It, they, for residential. They know the difference, though, between, you know, you, if, if you're cleaning, if you're switching over computers in your office and you're going to bring in, you know, a, a U-Haul full of uh, uh, computers. Right. I'm well, it's $100 a pound, well, $100 a limit. You're not going to get yet. Yeah, I mean, after that, it's 75 cents a pound. So. Right. So is there a system in place to not only verify the address of the resident, but then the type of product or uh, disposable waste that they're dropping off? There's a list of the waste that you can and cannot bring, and one of the no's is the, in, in commercial, uh, commercial or industrial waste. waste. Right. These guys know they they, they they spot them. People try that even on the Saturday morning right. deal, and they're they're caught. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean they know what they're looking for. Um. But one other education issue that potentially could help us is latex paint is not hazardous waste, and Correct. it's probably one of the largest single things we collect. Say that again. Latex paint is not hazardous waste, and so it, it can be put in the trash 
that you use a method of drying it out, dry it out. either kitty litter or putting it on newspaper. It would be a good idea to train that a little bit so it may keep our bill down for the future because by far and away, I think that's the big one. I agree. Latex paint, but it's not really hazardous. We right. can put that in our e-news and also just public education in general, how to throw away latex paint. Yeah. It, it, it is would the be number helpful. one thing that people I'll want to get rid of, but people don't want to take the time to dry it out. Right. Well, commercial painters, they use the, the something they put in a can or whatever, and it dries it out. That's how they get rid of it. Yeah, but it, it, to buy that retail is like five bucks. I'm sorry, what? If you buy that retail, it's like five bucks. It adds like five bucks to the, to the can of it. So you can buy it as a separate additive at Home yeah. Depot or something? Yeah. Kitty litter. Hmm? Yeah, kitty that's litter. <laughs> that's what I recommend, kitty litter. Yeah, kitty yeah. litter, yeah. newspaper. Finally, my we kid's cat is going to come in handy for something. <laughs> <laughs> and we can get rid of squirrels, too. <laughs> we, we got them all. We have your answers for everything. Squirrel <laughs> Uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly help educate people on some of the do's and don'ts, and we'll remind them about the 75-cent thing, because that is currently not in the flyer, although it's definitely in the contract. So, remind, I'm sorry, remind them about what? The 75 cents, if you, if you bring over 100 pounds. Oh, 75 cents a pound. Yes. Yeah, that, that will dent your pocketbook if you have a... If you have ready, yeah. yeah. Ready for a motion? Yes, sir. I move to approve resolution 2021-03-23-24, authorizing the supervisor and clerk to sign a one-year contract with ERG Environmental for household hazardous waste collection services. Further, that the supervisor report to the board on the results of this program following the ha household hazardous waste event. Motions made by Trustee Dorshevitz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Monahan. Mr. Clerk. Trustee Kermy. Yes. Trustee Monahan. Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yes. Supervisor Heise. Yes. Trustee Stewart. Yes. Clerk Corba. Yes. Treasurer Clinton. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I also sent you a copy. You have a copy on your desks of the performance bond that didn't make it in time for the agenda, but that is also uh, should be part of your, your files for the future, and that is also in order. Um, next, we have public comment. Everybody's all set here, looks like it. Uh, board comments, all I've got tonight is that we will be meeting on April 6th for a special meeting. As of now, that meeting will be here. That will be our public hearing on the sidewalk program. Uh, and then following that, if we decide to proceed, what we will have to do is reaffirm the contract with, what's their name again, the vendor? JB Contractors. JB Contractors. So, Kevin, a year ago when we did this, we still approved the contract with JB. Remember, that's how we were able to lock in their their rates from 2020. Uh, I think we signed those contracts. I remember signing the, the bluebacks, if I recall. Yeah, and we've been using that contract for, like, fire station number right. three and other things. Yeah. So what we'll have to do is amend that contract to include what additional projects? So we need to amend that to include North Territorial, McClumpa, and then the uh, back in Ann Arbor Trail, um, ADA ramps. The things that are in the budget currently, but we did not approve last year. We only approved the removal and replacement portion of the contract. And all of those are in the budget. We budgeted for that. That's the sidewalk gaps on North Territorial, the sidewalk gaps on McClumpa, and then just the corner there of, uh, the, of back in Ann Arbor Trail. Is there a possibility that we may add that other project? There's, we have a sinkhole at Lake Point Park. Is that something that they could do? That is something that they can do, yeah. They've been assisting us with some of the um, sewer and water repairs, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they can do that. Okay. Um, okay. So just be, that would be – those are the only two things on that agenda that, is, that will be a special meeting because we do have to take votes and we do have to do a public hearing. So um, that will be Tuesday, April 6th. As of now, I do not plan on having a meeting on April 13th. There is nothing pressing, and hopefully we can use that time to install the new sound system so we don't have to use these things anymore. Wonderful. Um, then we'll meet again on April 27th. That will we'll have a presentation by the assessing office on uh, basically assessing 101, what, what do they do, and they'll have a report on the latest round of Board of Review 
um, of petitions and appeals that they received. Uh, we have a petition from EOTech, uh, that's a company that's looking for an industrial um, facilities tax abatement. Um, we may have a couple other issues and then um, possibly some discussion about a new deal for our golf carts at uh, Township Park. But that's still a month away, so, you know, that's still kind of fluid. Um, that's all I have. Jerry? Getting, getting, I, I, back to the, uh, getting back to the contract with the, uh, uh, the folks that are going to fix up the sidewalks, I don't know the answer to this question, if anybody does. Do we currently have a SAD that's in place for the sidewalk repair program, or do we have to create a new SAD as part of this? No, we don't have to create an SAD. Uh, this is handled in state law and then again in our township ordinance. Remember, you collected all of those when you first came on board. You collected, because we had done a big sidewalk repair in 2016. Yeah, but there was an SAD set up for that. I've never known an SAD for repair, not for repair. And any sidewalks that we build, we don't need an SAD that we because we pay for them. We'd have to put the whole town. We'd have to put the whole township into an SAD, theoretically. Um, right. I thought the way it was it was like each parcel was its own individual special assessment district. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, Kevin and I sat down on this a while back, okay. and we right. don't makes it's yeah. easier, much easier than an SAD. Right. Yeah. All you got to do is write out bills and collect on them. So by signing this contract, I'm still going to go back to this sidewalk gap on, on North Territorial Road because I'm vehemently opposed to it. By signing this contract and saying it's in the budget, are we going ahead with this sidewalk repair program on North Territorial Road? Or are we going to get the board a chance to discuss and vote on it? We can, we can discuss and, and vote on it, yeah. I mean, I, I envision that as an addendum to the existing contract. So we could do them. So we could do them simultaneously, or we could do them one after the other. Okay. I mean, I. We'll we'll just have to do probably four different motions, I guess. And mm -hmm. and you brought up a good point about the the city's section not being done. We had a meeting with the uh, uh, the, the mayor and Mayor Pro Tem, and they're excited about that because they would like to continue it on also because it benefits the city. There's not a lot of gap on the city side. It's only about five, I'd say it's about 500 feet at the most. It's not a lot. We've talked to the city. We've told them, look, our people want sidewalks so that they can go into your city and spend money in your city. So build the damn sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think they got the message. And because they're a city, they have Act 51 money that they can spend on sidewalks. They're also getting 900000 from the feds. Uh, for COVID relief. So if we can spend that on infrastructure, then that shouldn't be a problem. It would be really cool, Jeremy. I think you came up with the idea today. If, if the city wanted to, they could basically just pay us, and then we could use our contractor to just continue the sidewalk until it links up with the cities. So if we could get that commitment up front before we spend the money, you, that would be my that would then, then that would eliminate my major concern about this, except for having to dig through the dead bodies. That's my second major. No concern. dead bodies in there. <laughs> Those are guys. Don't freak everybody out. <laughs> We've well, checked it out thoroughly. Well, I hope they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> now we got zombies. So, um, but anyway, we'll. I'll, I'll do my best, Mark, to try to talk to. The, we've talked to the city last week, two weeks ago. You know, really, I have to get to Sincock, and we have to try to get get a commitment from him. I, I would be shocked if he were to give me even a verbal at this point. So, but the mayor and the mayor pro tem were, were excited. They were they were supportive. They were supportive because they get it. I mean, it's money in their pocket. They're gonna. We were going to go to their city and it's buy important, stuff. Important commitment are two different things. No, I know. Well, I know. we built sidewalks in the past to nowhere, and then they were completed when developments uh, were built and things like that. That's how we got what we got. So anyway. But that's what we'll do. And if you want to add that sinkhole thing, I, that's up to you, Jeremy. I, it's not is that concrete? The sinkhole is in concrete. Yeah, it's it's uh, asphalt up against the concrete curb and gutter. Wait, so we've again? we've got uh, Lake Point Park. Mm -hmm. It developed right before it was. It, we found it like in December. Yeah, it's kind of a cave in right now. We've got it cordoned off. It's probably like under drain or uh, some catch basin. Lake so you're going to fix the root cause. Yeah. Fourteen. Right? That's a park south of North. 
Oh. The soccer park off of Haggerty. Oh, the soccer park. Near New Morning School. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant. It's not some horrible hole. I mean, it's just, it's about maybe two feet wide and maybe a foot long. So yeah, it's probably got some underlying, fight. undermining underneath the curve, yeah. too. So. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, I'm all set. Jerry? I'm great. You look, you look very presidential, actually. I mean, seriously. If they need somebody to play the president, you know, uh, well, he's ready. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Bob. I can't top that. <laughs> you can't top. You're all set. I'm all set. Okay, John. Well, I, I don't want this board to appear oblivious to uh, our societal responsibility because we've had some major occurrences this past week. Um, hate crimes. And it was determined this afternoon and disclosed that there was an AR-15 used uh, at a grocery store yesterday in Boulder, Colorado, resulting in 10 deaths and one <coughs> officer being um, killed. Uh, I'm a hunter. I'm a gun owner. I've shot pheasant. I've shot deer. But uh, we want to be continue to be sensitive of the, the pressure that is being mounted on your men and women in the police department, Lieutenant Kudra. Uh, I, I can hardly imagine what's going on out there. And it's also a, a causation of the, hopefully, the foreseeable end of this, this pandemic. So we want to be uh, conscious of uh, those concerns and sensitive to those uh, problems in our society. Thank you. Audrey? No, thank you. Chuck? Uh, dogs in the township park. What, yeah. Yeah. When's the next move that we can try it? Uh, people really want to do it. Do. I say we do a trial, and we do. We can buy a couple of these uh, bag dispensers and give it a try. So there's two ways of looking at this. One is a dedicated dog park, which I am totally opposed yeah, to. I don't want that. And or or we hope that everybody is a good neighbor, walk their dog in the park responsibly, and clean up after them. You're going to have some failures. You know, it's not. Some people are going to either forget a bag. That's why if we have a dispenser, maybe. But I'm pretty confident that uh, people will be good about it and responsible. And I don't know, maybe uh, we try this dispenser. Maybe they want to contribute to it. Whatever. I don't know. Oh yeah. The bags are usually free at most places. The city yeah. of Plymouth has a yeah. couple in Kellogg Park. Yeah. Uh, at each one. M Mr. Supervisor, a dog park would work pretty well up in Northville. No, they don't work. They don't work. There's it's a, a lot of work. It's a liability. Let's try the first step here. It's liability. It's cleanup. It's maintenance. It's uh, Li it's liability is my biggest concern. I mean, where people's dogs bite other bite people. Other people bite other, people other dogs, dogs, attack other dogs. Um, the ground gets chewed up. Then there's this, I know in some communities they've had to uh, have like a card system, uh, like a, a card reader to, to gain access. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous after a while. So. I've seen it in New York City. They have, but, but they make it work. I don't know how they do it with well, 10,000 people on the block. Yeah. they got a dog park. Yeah. Uh, one other item is our trees need to be watered soon. Yeah. Is our DPW director ready with a tank and the bags? It's going to be a lot of work. Maybe sometimes Boy Scouts or me or somebody yeah. well, we'll, will be we'll, doing it because they're not going to live if we don't water them through the summer. Right. We will, uh, we're coming up on that, and we'll, uh, we'll follow up with Patrick on that. Because he'll need a tank that fits in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah, we have that. We have right. that. No. <laughs> or coyotes could pee on it, then we keep the squirrels away. So we're thinking of everything. It'll be, yeah, squirrel bait. <laughs> Anything else? No. Okay, Mark. I'm all set. All right. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Trustee Dorshevitz. Is there a second? Second by Clerk Vorbal. Those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.